Hello. Thank you for joining us at our next Shoebox Conversation. Shoebox, yeah, Shoebox Conversation. <laughs> I wanted to say Shoebox Connect, but that's something else that we're doing. <laughs> um, you know, words, we don't know what words mean nowadays. <laughs> um, today we have Joanne Block, uh, one of our awesome multimedia artists joining us, along with Shelly Silverio. Uh, we're going to be showing some slides of her work and talking about her practice and, you know, asking some questions and figuring out what, or find, or no, delving deep into what she does and why she does it. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, the big question is why, right? <laughs> so, um, Joanne, to start off, um, before we kind of move into some images, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, how long have you been doing art? Where did you go to school? And why? Why, why are you an artist? OK, that's one of the reasons I make art, to kind of, it's a question. But anyway, going back to your first question, um, <laughs> I am kind of a late bloomer. Uh, I went back to school uh, after, like, maybe 20 years ago, and I got my MFA at, um, in Vermont, Vermont College of Fine Art. And what was the other question? Um, let's see, why? Why are you an artist? Okay. And just kind of a little bit about your history as a person and an artist. And, okay. you know, I know you, you were in Washington, D.C., you came here. So yeah, just a little bit about your history. Okay. Well, I remember, I'm going back when I was young. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear your story. Yes. yes. Uh, I remember seeing a Grandma Moses book, and somehow that just intrigued me, her artwork. Oh, so cool. That was that. And then um, I, I didn't have formal training. I grew up during the hippie era, so I uh, kind of, that was my life. And, uh, and I didn't really get it together until, like I said, later on to actually, I went, I went to UCLA, I got my uh, BFA there, and then there was a hiatus, and then I decided, uh, I got in a relationship uh, with a woman who was doing her PhD, and she kept encouraging me to go back to school. So I did, and it was like, you know, just, I feel like looking back on it, that, that this was a passion that took me a long time to really resolve. And, but now the, the more I do it, the more I feel like I'm really in my skin with it. And that, and that this is what I should be doing or meant to be doing. That's awesome because I know so many artists at all levels of their career who never feel that way. <laughs> Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, there's always this subjective thing where I feel like I'm questioning, you know, the big question, am I really an artist? So there's always that looming over you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Something that um, I was giving free art advice this weekend and I did a little video and um, I was like reading up like more of your statements that you send in and things like that. And something that you had said earlier was about believing you're an artist. And that's like some advice that I gave over the weekend is, you know, we believing we're an artist and having that confidence in ourselves is huge, you know, it, definitely. Absolutely, because we are unique and we're not following a, a formula. We're making our own. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that really goes to like what your work is about too because okay so this idea of like are you an artist what's your path I feel like a lot of your work is about how you are processing being a human being what is your reality about what is your community about and so if the way that you process that is through art then hi you're an artist you know <laughs> yeah I, I guess uh, I was reading about um Bruce Nauman because uh, Susan Rothenberg passed away. Yeah. And, um, and I guess one of his uh, big aha moments is when he went in the studio and said, if he's making art, he's an artist. Whatever he does there is art. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. How liberating. 
Exactly, exactly. And that goes for if you're sitting at your kitchen table making art, you know, because not everybody has a studio, but you know, your studio is your kitchen table or your sketch pad or, but it is believing you're an artist and like yeah. you said, having that confidence for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, um, kind of, so tell us about like your art in particular, like we're going to look at some slides in a minute, but you know, you have several different series. You're a multidisciplinary artist. You do, you know, a few different things, which I think is fantastic because artists like have, you know, this mind, these minds that go all over the place. And I think we have to create differently depending on where it takes us. Um, is there like a single thread through your art that you think about? Uh, yeah, I, okay, so here's where my notes come in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I think there's three main uh, issues or themes. So first of all, there's identity. And uh, for me, it's like, who am I? Where do I belong? And how do I express that? Um, I was adopted, and I also identify as queer. So both those things um, are uh, a k kind of, uh, they're, they're not solidly placed in the world. They're on the outskirts. And I think that with art, I love that um, the feminists say that the personal is political. Mm -hmm. So there is using art to understand myself and explore the world. That's one thing. Um, I also, I think I, I have issues uh, uh, looking at power. Who has the power in our world? I remember when I was uh, getting my MFA and reading about how all old white men wrote history. And that's, that's yeah. been passed on, you know? So where am I? Where are other marginalized people? You know, where's our voice? So that's important. And the other, the last thing I realized after I made the art, when I was actually in my MFA program, that it can educate. And I, I had my um, uh, show up and these guys came in, these workers came in and they looked at it and they're going, what's this? We had this really cool conversation and I was able to talk to them and tell them why I made this, why it was important, because these women were pushed to the side. This was the work I did about uh, lesbians in the 40s and how they couldn't get jobs. If, even if they had gone to college and became teachers or whatever, uh, and they were butch and they dressed that way, that they couldn't work. They had to take menial jobs, labor. Wow. So that's it. I think that art can educate and, and provoke and all that stuff. Question. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to just share, um, go to our images now and share the screen. Just, um, let's see. I wanted to show an image here of you working in the studio. I love this that you sent me for one of our posts. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it shows like the breadth of what you do, the queer before queer series and your digital paintings, the three, you know, that you did every day on your travels. And what are you working on, you know, at the moment at, at your desk? These are smaller images that are going to be um, included with the large portraits. And um, I'm just, um, well, do you want me to talk about them now or what? Or we, we could go on and maybe get back to them. Oh, that's okay. I mean, we can, so there, um, if you're working on a, and these are collage work or are you drawing or painting here? I'm painting, I'm uh, mixed media-ing and I'm collaging. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, and then I have another image here of your whole studio. So everybody right. can get an idea of the size, the immensity of the work and, you know, I mean, I love this, you know, the installation of your work here. Um, your studio is in Ventura. And right. I know you've talked about you often ride your bike. You're, you have an electric bike from <laughs> Ojai to Ventura, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really something. That's great. 
Uh, let's see. So um, I wanted to start off with the Queer Before Queer series. Tell us a little more about it. I have this image and then a couple detail shots. Okay, so um, like I said, the personal is political. Uh, as I aged, I noticed there that um, at some point, like I'd go into a store and some young something or other would look past me, you know, that I was being dismissed. Uh, and that pissed me off. And I decided to make work about uh, aging lesbians because I felt that, um, you know, just the, what these, what women like that are older women, what they had to go through, the kind of barriers and obstacles that they had to fight not being accepted, uh, made them kind of fierce, I'll use that word, made them fierce, mm -hmm. that, that that still is something that despite what they look like on the outside, that that's who they are. And what are the names underneath? What do those represent? I loved your story about those Love when this. I first met you. Okay. So these women are all Ojai women. Um, I'm, uh, you know, busting them, but they are. <laughs> and uh, so we all played volleyball together at someone's house. At two of these characters right here at their house, we would play naked lesbian volleyball. <laughs> and and uh, that went on for three summers. And then there was actually a core A team. So I was in the A team. Oh. I, I'm, I'm Mr. Block there over on the far right. Uh, there was Crash, uh, Tiffany, and she she's so funny. She would sit there and like fling her hair back, you know, in the, in the Tiffany uh, fashion. Mad Dog, because she put that um, zinc cream on her, all, not on her lips, all over her mouth, you know, and then uh, Smitty. So that's where those names came from. That's awesome. And then, so tell us about the material that you used. How are these portraits made? Okay, so I repurposed uh, fashion magazines, queer magazines, and other types. And I uh, cut them up. I put the pieces of paper into bowls so they became like my palette. And then um, I think actually, when I was done with it, I felt like I was painting. I felt like when you walk in the room and you don't get up close, uh, people think they're paintings, but they're not. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, they're very painterly. I, I had to look at Christine's um, details before I realized that they were not painting. <laughs> yep. Fantastic. Yeah. Also, just like kind of a side uh, comment, it, I was thinking about your story and this kind of idea of being passed over. And I love that, I think the thing that I love the most about those portraits is that they all exude such a cool, like there's just something so cool about yeah. all of those women. And I think that, yeah. I just, I don't know, I like it. I think it's great. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I, I wanna say something um, that, when I was making it and what I realized, what I was very conscious of that um, most portraits that you see of women are either eroticized or, and I didn't want to, you know, I feel like even though they're nude, they're not sexual objects. Exactly. There's, yeah, there's like, there's a vulnerability, there's an exposure, but there's also just that kind of like inherent power. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, and that, that's, always such an interesting way to use a nude body I think yeah yeah they're not they're not uh seducing the male uh, the male gaze as it were John yeah. Berger yeah <laughs> exactly so then um the other series on the wall in your studio when I first met you um are these digital paintings that you did while you were traveling tell us a little bit about those uh Right. So my partner and I traveled for a year. Uh, we were so lucky that it was the year before <laughs> the world changed. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I wanted to have some kind of an art practice and I wasn't sure 
what that was. And what I wound up doing is making nightly drawings on my iPad. Every night I did something. And, and they then I, were like doodles or something. They weren't, you know, meant to, they, they didn't take very long, but it was something. Yeah, yeah. I love how you have them installed here. Yeah. I know this isn't all of them, so I mean, it would be really amazing <laughs> to see them all together. As big as my studio is, the walls will not accommodate them. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, and are you still making daily drawings? Yeah. Because I, I, I was going to say, I think I've seen on your Instagram or something, some what seemed like new daily drawings. I'm yeah. curious how, so like if this started as something being like away from your studio and having a daily practice, like how, is there anything that you've noticed about how that has continued to stay in your practice and what that means to you in your practice now? I'm still exploring who I am in a way. And sometimes, um, you know, it's, oh, there's Sam? <laughs> no, no, that's on Slack. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, at first, I, the very first drawings I did, I think I, I consciously was thinking about Arthur Dove, and then, and then I, I wasn't Arthur Dove, so I had to, like, stop doing that. <laughs> and then, um, but now I, I'm not sure. Sometimes I'm very tired at night, and uh, uh, other times I, I, I'm still, I, I'd have to say I'm still in a quandary and searching because... I, I'm not an abstract artist, and I'm going into this kind of mode here. So it's okay. new. you. You have a lot of, uh, I guess when you do it over a, a year of daily drawings, you do kind of build up a language, because I just think it's interesting. Um, being somebody who also paints figures and works with a figure and stuff, I can relate to that thing of being like, oh, I'm not an abstract artist, but there is something about just uh, working with shape and color and relating it to your daily life that is exploration, you know? Yeah. You find something when you do that. Yeah, yeah. And I like that because I feel like I'm just wandering around and I don't know where I'm going, you know, but. I'd love to see these in like a catalog for like, in chronological order and by wherever you were at the time you know it would be interesting to see how they change based yeah. on where you were and you know yeah how you're feeling so consider that in the future okay <laughs> um, i have a detail here or a shot here with a few of them just so everybody can see up close. I love how you printed them out, all square, all like these small, I think they were like six by six or eight by eight or something like that. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. No, they're just, they're powerful seeing them, you know, like this. And each one. That is cool. That's a great picture, Christine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so then we moved oh. to another series. Oh boy. That I know, that I love. <laughs> and what is the series called? Oh, or do I you have a name for it. I think I am going to call it Sex Objects. Okay, okay. And what are these made of? Where did the series come from? Um, these were things that I had on my, uh, back in DC, I had it on a countertop um, and just remnants. And I just started putting them together. Yeah, and just as you saw them, like for instance, I mean, I see the Swiffer, <laughs> you know, the thing from Swiffer. I couldn't it, believe that, that, that you actually identified that. <laughs> I mean, did you, like, you know, I mean, of course, you know, artists have this vision did you automatically know what you were going to use it for? I think that, that what started it was the one to, well, the right, the left and the right where you have these, I'm not, I'm going to call them pea cups, but I don't uh -huh. know what they're called, but it's for if you're camping and you're yeah. a woman. Yeah. Like you can use that. Yep. So that's what started. It, it just reminded me, you know, it was, it, 
it related to the vagina and blah 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 and you know yeah yeah and then well once you like see one thing i think everything all of a sudden becomes father <laughs> for your art <laughs> and were these um done prior to the daily drawings yes okay yeah before but, i left on my trip but are you still making them i'm going to i okay. uh, that's yeah that's uh in the works yeah i want to see more of these yeah <laughs> and i think i have a couple of details here well i feel like they're pretty visually related to that um daily drawing series definitely that's interesting same person huh well yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, it's interesting because you were saying like you're not an abstract artist but like these came before that and I realize you are referencing the body again but at the same time you you are using it in an abstracted form objects and color and shape yeah you know? yeah, yeah 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 I, I I sort of in the back of my mind I sort of want to go there too like in the near future oh good you're on your way <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> And then, so this series of um, Origin of the Odd, tell us about these. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. So now I, I'm, I'm uh, there's a certain geological period where you, I can't remember the name of it, but it's where the first uh, multicellular organism uh, appeared. And uh, they had weird names, these multicellular, like uh, uh, arm stomach or something, you know, just really weird names. So that to me seemed really, really queer. And I, um, and I felt like when I thought about it, it's like, you know, we're all queer because we all started from this very queer place. And, um, you know, we're all the same really. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when they did the genome project, I think Bill Clinton said that, that, that we're 99% the same or something and just this slight difference, but we make such a big deal out of the differences. And so I uh, created, uh, oh, and then the other thing, I was uh, at SVA residency. So somehow um, I got accepted into bio art which oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> who'd have thunk it you know <laughs> so there i was in bio art and um so all of these things were made with uh not entirely but mostly uh bio uh bio uh organic material oh okay yeah and then I, so I made the, the object itself and then I had the, the shadow figure that um, kind of a scary uh, shadow made up of uh, like a monster or something. To, so that was uh, not, well, not foreshadowing, but shadowing our past. You yeah. Know? So that, that was that. Did the sculptures last? I, I have them. Yeah, some of them um, have fallen apart. Uh, you haven't gotten it to the one that is gone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I only put a couple up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have to recreate uh, that one. Yeah, these remind me of um, Tim Nolan, or, uh, oh, uh, what's their, Nolan and Webster, is that their name? They do the shadow, oh my gosh, I can't believe I, I've loved their work forever. And of course, now their name is just, um, Tim, oh my gosh, Nolan and Webster, I think. It's a collaborative couple that use trash to create these sculptures, or I mean, to create these shadows. And so, um, you know, I love how you're doing it organically, you know, with these. It was, it was fun. It was fun. You know, I did the whole electrical thing myself. And so it was a really learn, you know, a big learning curve with, with that. Yeah, that's how we do, you know, I mean, we learn from experimenting and yeah. playing and figuring things out. That's why artists are just so adaptable that way. 
So, and then this is an older piece that we recently shared and I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> I love yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Tell this, us about this in the series. This is from the show, uh, Jane Doesn't Need Dick. And uh, <laughs> uh, so here I have the, uh, these teddy boys that, that kind of prefigured uh, being queer, you know, or, or uh, performing as queer, you know, dressing that way. Um, that was back in the, um, in England, I guess, back in the 60s or 70s. And then I just paired it with uh, these two women on the left who were from uh, Michigan, the Women's Michigan Music Festival that went on for 40 years. And that was uh, women that spent a week together out in the woods in Michigan and it was very cool. Yeah, um, it's a great piece. How big you. is it? Um, it's probably, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd say about three feet by five or six. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, you know, it almost fits right in with your Queer Before Queer. Definitely a similar style. I could definitely see it being part yeah. of that too. Yeah, yeah. So the background was painted and then the other, uh, the figures are collaged. Okay. And that was the first time I collaged any figures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, again, you know, they're very painterly. Yep. And then I think I, we, um, the newest piece that you sent us. <laughs> I wanted to end with this one because it's brand new. And it, you know, it, to talk about what we're going through now, I mean, how are you, you know, how are, as an artist, how are you working through COVID and, you know, our quarantine and, you know, through your art, through this piece of art, you know, how are you dealing with it? Um, I actually like the, uh, that the noise has been turned off personally. And um, I did this, I, uh, so I noticed that uh, I'm still uh, applying for shows. And I noticed that quite a few of them, um, like a good percentage, like show, send us your art about COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, so I made this specifically for that, even though I hadn't done anything. Uh, so what this is, is I, I took one of my nightly drawings uh, and put it in Photoshop, and then I, uh, and then put that gloved hand that we're all familiar with, <laughs> and uh, placed it in front. And I think it also is suggestive of a stained glass window and some kind of a blessing. Yeah, yeah. So it has kind of a double meaning. Definitely. Um, and I had a question about that or a comment, and of course it eluded me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I, was, it's gone. I was just thinking about the, the thing that you said before um, that has driven a lot of your work is the personal is political. And I feel like that kind of is relatable to the same thing when we talk about like what is art making during COVID. Like I think that can be anything that we yeah. that it is for you personally because that's what we're all doing. We're all sitting with ourselves inside, you know. Yep. Yes. Yeah. It's a and, it's a special time. <laughs> and exactly, I think that's kind of where I was going to is that. You know, I've heard some artists are, you know, working on bodies of work that they've already been creating, or some artists haven't been able to create at all, and that's totally okay, too. But, you know, I've just been doodling or sketching. I mean, I hate to call it doodling, <laughs> but, you know, sketching or, you know, who knows what will happen with it. And, you know, creating, like, you know, daily work like you're doing and still being in the studio and it's helping us like distract us. It's helping keep our mind active. It's helping thinking outside the box. And, you know, I mean, now is the perfect time to experiment and, you know, you're doing it. I mean, these are great. 
I mean, you know, I know you've been, um, I didn't show your other series. I wanted to keep some things secret, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know, and yeah, I mean, the big thing is, you know, if we're able to keep working, then that's fantastic. You know, whatever that looks like for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and you awesome. helped us, Christine. Oh, thank you. Working. I'm going to go back to seeing all of us at once. <laughs> um, Joanne, you have a piece in a zine that is coming out soon. Can you tell us what the name of the zine is? And Dyke on a Bike. <laughs> Dyke on a Bike is in the uh, women's. I'm sorry, the name is eluding me right now for us. Women's so Zine. Uh, I think it's WMN underscore Zine. Okay. And it's, uh, yeah, I followed them on Instagram. But it's also a, 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 a hard copy publication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've put out the link on Shoebox um, for the actual, um, so you can pre order the book too. Thank you. Um, yeah, I saw that. Thank you. And if, you know, here's an image of it and yeah, no, it's, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm thrilled that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm being seen during this time. And I think that's people, people want to be seen. That's a, a human quality. Especially right now when we're not seeing anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> but also always, because that's what your work is about. Yeah. You know, yes. How do you see yourself and how do you see your community and how can you as an artist create a platform where you and your community are seen? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think you're doing it. <laughs> it's been wonderful talking to you, Joanne. Oh my Thank God, you. I was so nervous. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I think it went well. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, we're going to say goodbye to, you know, everybody who's watching and we're, we'll post like the, we'll post this on our website. We'll post your, your website so people can find you on and your social media and that way they can look forward to everything else you're doing. But thank you so much. Okay. And thank you. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.